my shuggies, Ashley here, and in today's video, I am so excited to present my personal review and slight baby demo of my brand new vlogging camera, the Sony ZV-1. I recently received this and I'm going to give you my view, opinions, tips, and tricks on how I utilize this best. I am not a professional by any means, but wanted to give you guys just a girl's opinion that uses it on YouTube. So if you were interested in seeing this review, then just keep watching. you guys I am by no means a crazy IT girl that is infiltrated in the camera world I simply am learning just like everybody else and utilizing them only for my YouTube videos I did upgrade my camera recently because I had the Sony RX100 7 camera that I used for just simple vlogging footage that I'm inserting into my YouTube videos or I am showcasing either makeup or clothes or furniture or decor of some sort and I saw that Sony came out with a new ZV-1 vlogging camera and I just had to get my hands on it to see the comparison from my RX107. I do want to give my opinions and show you how I utilize this camera. I think that they are both amazing cameras. I love them both for different reasons, but today it's all about the ZV-1. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, this is a camera made for specifically vlogging. I love that. I love that they actually have listened to all of the YouTube gurus, the IT techs, the camera lovers to actually utilize something that we have put our opinions and things that we wanted adjusted into a camera that we can all utilize. It is super lightweight. It has got some amazing features. First and foremost, I love that the microphone on this is absolutely massive. Now, comparing my old RX107, and by old, it's not that old, I think it's about a year, year and a half old, it is supposed to be substantially bigger. It looks pretty big to me, as far as you can see on the top here, that is the internal mic. I am really impressed with the sound. I always used an external mic, this little baby right here, and I plugged it in to my old camera like so and that is how I utilized sound on this camera now I did the same thing with this it was not the same I got so much like dead noise white noise whatever you want to call it it just it didn't sound crisp and clear like I wanted it to so I played around with the settings I watched a ton of reviews I played around with it myself and I found what works best for me this is just my opinion as not having the external mic. I haven't hooked up my road mic. That might be a whole nother story. But again, keeping in mind for me, I'm just throwing this on and just showing you some clothes, showing you some, you know, house decor, some grocery haul products, nothing crazy. So I don't want something cumbersome. So for all intents and purposes, I'm just using the mic that it came with and I have adjusted the volume to 24. So if you go into your menu settings, in the second tab, page number three, you scroll down to audio recording level, I leave mine on 24. Now, if you are using an external mic, do not leave it on 24. You are going to need to dial it way the heck down. And I'm, I think when I tried this mic in specific, it was at like 12 and it was still like so I'm thinking maybe like high single digits if you're going to use an external mic. Again, you're going to have to play around with this depending on what it is you use it for. If you're outside, this could be completely different. But for what I utilize it for, I'm going to say when you're using the regular mic that the camera comes with, leave it on about 24. And you are able to see this if you leave the display on when you are recording right here. So as you're talking, you can see them moving back and forth and it's supposed to be close to the red line, but not on it. Speaking of sound, we are going to move up to the top where they put this amazing feature and that's the hot shoe feature, which you can hook your road mic up to if you wish, or if you're outside and there's a lot of wind and noise, they came up with this super cute, I guess it's called a wind muff or a windscreen, and that's supposed to minimize the sound of the air and the wind outside. And you can just simply clip this right into your hot shoe spot. 
and just like that it covers up the microphone so that the all of the extra noise does not come in again for me isn't really necessary at the current moment because i'm filming inside i'm filming indoors where it's quiet and the only thing going is my ac but it's great to have that additional little feature that i can utilize if i do bring it outside and do you know like um an outdoor vlog of some sort. Another great adjustment that they made from the RX 107 to the ZV-1 is that the RX 107 did have a flip screen, but it flipped out towards you and was adjustable high and low in that capacity. Now, for me, it was fine, it was okay, it was whatever, it wasn't life-changing, but the fact that they took the ZV-1 and they made an actual selfie flip screen for me was absolute perfection. It is the same as my Canon 80D. I think that's amazing if you don't have a viewfinder or an extra monitor. It's great just to be able to kind of line yourself up in the screen. This, if you're doing vlogging and you really want to know exactly how you look, how the background's looking, how the autofocus is working, all of your settings on the screen, for me, that's a really great upgrade and change that they did make. Okay, so next I wanna talk about some of the amazing abilities that this camera in specific has. And the first one is the mode button on the top. If you click it and you can see on the back screen, it shows, sorry, my ring light is reflecting in the background. It shows you all of these different settings that you can change by just one click of a button. So you don't have to go into menu and settings and tabs and pages and all of that stuff. You just click the mode button on the top and you pick your setting whether that's movie or high frame rate or memory recall scene selection sweet panorama manual exposure all of those settings they're in there one click of a button I love that very simplistic and to the point and I personally keep mine on program audio setting this says that it automatically sets aperture and shutter speed and other settings can be adjusted as desired so for me, that's kind of like a middle ground where some of them are already preset and then the other things you can change as well. Now there are three other little settings that I think are absolutely amazing on this camera. One of them is right here on the top of the camera and that is a C1 setting. And what that does, if you press it one time, it blurs your background out. If you press it again, it clears the background out. And this is great for me personally in my wardrobe room when I am focused on an outfit in specific in the mirror, it can kind of haze out that background so that your focus really is on the outfit in the mirror, not so much what's going on in the background. This would also be good for nature or if you're vlogging outside for a million different scenarios. It's just good, again, to have that customizability there for you if you want it. And if you don't, with one click of a button, you can change it just like that. Please keep in mind that every time you turn the camera off and back on, this is something that you do have to additionally hit so this isn't going to be something that you hit once and it's saved so every time you turn the camera on if you want the background to be blurred you're gonna to have to hit that button so keep that in mind the next feature is product showcase and this is a very similar to the C1 button except it's the little trash can button here on the bottom right corner and you click it and it says C2 and all that does is it keeps in constant focus so for example if I'm showing you this tripod right here instead of doing this and forcing the camera to focus on that product, it's just automatically going to showcase that product instead of focusing on your face. Another great feature for people who love to vlog, especially when it comes to makeup and things, products that they want to showcase specifically. The last setting is the ND filter, and this is really cool because if you are in an area that is super, super bright and oversaturated with light, you just click ND filter in the settings, and it will adjust the light so that you are the main focus focus and the uh, rest of the light that is bleeding out can really subside and get you more in focus of the picture. This is great for things that you can't control like sunlight and all of those nature situations that of course we can't control like we can with indoor light. Okay, the last two things I'm going to talk about are the tripod and then I'm going to go over my actual settings that I have set and I love on this camera in specific. Now, this tripod in and of itself could be an entire video because this for me is, it's a game changer, it's life changing, and I really feel like I wouldn't feel the same way about this camera if I didn't have this tripod. It is that good. Like, it is so good. 
Even if you don't have this camera, you have to get the tripod. I mean, you need to get the camera, but you have to get the tripod. First of all, let's talk about my old tripod. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just a little old, good, you know, adjustable tripod. You know, you got the little ring here that you can tighten it up so it doesn't move. It screws into the bottom of the camera. I, I use it. It's got, you know, good grip on it. I had no issues with it, right? I thought it was fine. I didn't think I needed anything greater. I wasn't searching for anything better. Until I pulled this out of the box and I was like, oh, that seems a little big and bulky. And then I put it on my camera and used it. First of all, let's talk about how you put it on the camera. I'm so used to this that I wasn't aware of how far we have come. You simply take the camera where you would normally screw it on and with one hand, you push the wheel and it attaches itself to the bottom of the camera. For me, <laughs> that was seriously life-changing. And it is super tight, super secure. It's not going anywhere. I love how secure it feels. That's my number one biggest compliment to this. I love how secure it feels. I literally have not had a second of, oh my gosh, it's gonna fall off, which with this, you know, there were a couple of moments where I did, I'm not gonna lie. Now, in addition to this, it does turn into a regular tripod. It isn't as adjustable and customizable as my old one, albeit is super, super steady and super, super high quality. So as you can see here, the front two legs come out. These are great for countertop shots, which I love. I wish I would have had this. And then the back piece is where the battery is actually housed. You unlock it, open the gate, and that's where your battery goes. So this is super sleek, super chic, super durable, super heavyweight. I love it. And the best part about the entire thing is it's Bluetooth wireless. So when you turn on your camera and it's already connected with one touch of a button, I don't have my SD card in there, bam, you're recording. With one touch of a button, oh, you just clicked a picture. With one touch of a button, you're zooming. Also, there is a lock button on here. So if you do need to lock it, if you have, you know, heavy fingers, if you're worried about touching it too much when you're vlogging, you can lock it so that you don't do that. And then the last feature right here is the C1 button, and that's the same feature as the one up here, so you can blur your background with just one touch on your tripod. Also, at the base of the tripod right here, you can push this button in, and it allows you to turn it and lock it in any direction you choose. This thing seriously is a game changer. It is worth every single penny. If it was $150, I'd still buy it. That's how much I absolutely love and think this is 100% necessary, especially for someone who's vlogging, especially for someone that is doing you know, YouTube tutorials, that's doing hauls, that needs that stable shot that you don't have to worry about because there's nothing worse than having a camera that works, but having a tripod that sucks. And I am not saying mine sucks because it doesn't, but I'm just saying I couldn't live without this. Okay, now last but certainly not least, I'm going to go over the settings that, again, they work for me, they work for my style, my vlogging, and my everyday use of this camera, which 99% of it is actual vlogging and video footage. So we're going to go over exactly what is here on the screen. So if you go into menu settings, I will go over all of the things that I adjusted and they are within the first two tabs that have the cameras on them. So in the first tab, if you scroll over to page three, that is my shooting mode and that is program auto, which I talked about earlier. Program auto. Moving on to page number five, we're still in tab one, page number five. My focus mode is automatic AF, so that's automatic autofocus. I also changed my focus area, which is jumping down one line, to wide. And I believe that this is helping my issue with it kind of going back and forth too much. Because I think when you're increasing the width of the autofocus, it's not changing so much. 
I don't know if I'm completely wrong about that, but ever since I've changed it, I haven't had that issue. So change your focus area to wide. Moving to page number seven. We're still in tab number one. We're moving over to page number seven. I changed my exposure to 0.7. I know people don't agree with that. They say you leave it at zero. For me, 0.7 works. Not a full one, but a 0.7. Now, there are times, depending on the day, depending on the room, where I do need to adjust that, and if you need to adjust it, it's fine. But on a day-to-day -day basis, on a vlogging basis, I like it at a 0.7. Okay, moving on to page number nine. Under creative style, I personally changed mine to vivid. Again, everyone swears by standard according to everything that I've researched, but I took the time to try all of these out, and yes, it took forever and a day, but I loved Vivid, and more in specific, if you actually tap on Vivid, you scroll to the right, as you can see down here at the bottom, you can customize, that's correct, customize Vivid. So I changed my contrast up one, and then my saturation up one and my sharpness at zero. So within the creative style, I chose vivid and then I customized vivid to contrast one, saturation one, and then sharpness at zero. Make sure when you're done, you hit enter. And when you go back, you need to see vivid right here. Page 10 is soft skin effect. If you were doing something more selfie mode, I think this would be totally applicable, maybe on a low mode, if you will. But for me, I'm pretty much doing things that are not selfie mode. I'm showing you something in a mirror or I'm showing you something around the house. So skin focus really wouldn't necessarily be applicable to objects and clothes. But again, if you're doing something selfie, if you're doing something makeup, if you're, you know, showcasing a color or something on your face, then I'd say leaving soft skin effect on low would be absolute perfection but in my case right now I have it off again if you change your mind you can always go back and make that adjustment super easy 90% of the things you're going to change are in those first two tabs now we are moving on to tab number two we are on page number one my file format I have left it standard and my record setting I have left at 60p and 50m I didn't want to mess with them I didn't want to change any of that stuff so I just left them on standard moving over to page three at the bottom where it says steady shot make sure that yours says active. I know that um, on a regular standard when you open up the camera box, it's supposed to come on active, but for whatever reason, if it's changed, make sure it is on active. I feel like anyone that's vlogging is active. You're moving, you're not a robot. So you're by nature, you know, gonna move your arm, move your hands, especially if you're like me and you're Italian and you're talking with your hands, you want to make sure that you're keeping the camera as steady as possible. And in order to do that, using the active setting for me has been working like a charm. Moving over to page number six, the zoom speed. I definitely changed that to fast. I didn't know this on my old camera because I didn't really play with the settings as much as I have on this camera. But if you really want to zoom in on something, you know, when I yell, hit me with a zoom and we're here for four days because that thing moves like a snail. I didn't know you could change the zoom speed. So changing it to fast, if I say hit me with the zoom, you're zoomed and we're back. So things like that I think are really great because it saves time, especially if you're trying to catch something in the moment, you really don't want to have to wait around while it's slowly zooming in, if you know what I mean. Now the only other tab that I have absolutely touched is the third one and that is the network tab and that's because I set it up my tripod with the Bluetooth settings, super easy to pair. If you have any questions about that under Bluetooth settings, you go to pairing, you hit photo and T, seven seconds, it pairs it and you're done and you're good to go. Make sure if you do get the tripod and you do pair them together, don't make the mistake like me and forget to then scroll down to Bluetooth remote control and toggle it on because you can do all that uh, work to pair it together and then it's not gonna work unless you toggle the remote control on. You're welcome. Took me about 10 minutes to figure that out. All right, you guys, that completes this review and all of my features and settings that I love for the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that post notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload new videos. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.